Good afternoon, YouTube. I want to give you another update on the shop. We have power. There's actual cables connected up there. And if we go over here where the gaping hole was, a shiny new meter, which means that we have a light, light in the shop, light that we can turn on and off. All the outlets work. The electric panel's all buttoned up. So, phase one's complete as far as the electric. It works. Uh, and everything worked right out of the box uh, as far as the wiring. So, uh, I'm happy about that. No uh, trips, no problems. Uh, there was one issue I had to diagnose, and it has to do with this guy over here. One of my switches in the three-way switch. Now, before I talk about that, let me rewind because I didn't fill you in on exactly what happened. When last we spoke, I was pontificating about the various ways of three-way switch wiring and four-way switch wiring and dead-end switches and all this kind of stuff. Well, what I told you in there was absolutely wrong because when I actually got to wire it, I was like, oh, well, then this connects here and then that connects there and then, and then, oh, crap. So, uh... It turns out my wiring was wrong and I was convoluting a whole mess and trying to shortcut something that I really just couldn't shortcut. There was no other, there was no other way around it. So I ran it in the more traditional sense. So I have a hot line going from the panel all the way over to that first switch over there by the door. And then I've got my 14.3 going back up and all the way over again down to the four-way switch there. More 14.3, go up, all the way over here, back down to that three-way, and then the 14.2 going to the lights, going up, up to that first one right there, and then zigzagging all the way back and forth, back and forth. And I'm doing the camera to make the zigzag motion. I'm sure you all hate that. Okay, and dead ending, dead ending at that light in the back uh, right corner there. I didn't want to do that initially because I was worried about voltage drop because it's so far. I mean, we were talking close to 200 feet maybe of, of actual wire length, and I was worried. Um, but I also figured that there's a good chance it will work because these LED lights, yeah, they take 120 volts, but it's LEDs, and there's a lot of wiggle room. So I figured they could operate the lower voltage, maybe just pull a little bit more current. It turns out they can, so that's awesome. So that is simplifying the wiring. And I learned a lesson and wasted some wire I didn't want to waste. The runs that are connecting the wires up there are, that's actually 14.3 wire because that's how I ran it originally. And I thought it wasn't smart to strip all that down and run it at with 14.2 just cause. So rather than the extra effort, I just capped all the red wires in those junction boxes and there's no current uh, connected or no, you know, nothing going on those wires. So that's okay. So back to this. This guy failed, uh, and it's a switch problem. And I should have started the video and actually had the switch out, and I could have showed you some stuff. But uh, basically, the switch is broken. That's the only way I can figure it. So the way a three-way switch works is in one position, current is flowing from one of the travelers to your common, which goes up to your light. And then what that switch does is it just switches between the two travelers. So at any given time for any given switch configuration, one of the travelers should have current on it and one should not, it should be disconnected. And so that was happening all the way till we got to that switch. And in that switch, it only worked one way. So in the case of uh, example, on the black traveler, when I had the switch engaged, it was connecting, passing voltage to the common and up to the light. But when I flip the voltage to the red coming in there, and then I tried to flip the switch accordingly to switch that voltage from red to common, I got no voltage. And turning everything off, doing this quick continuity test, it confirmed that we weren't getting continuity on that one position of the switch. So, bad switch. So that's, we can deal with that. A few bucks, replace it, no problem. That's all I had. Um, just want to give you guys an update. Shop has power now. So, uh, I checked all the outlets. Uh, I'll show you what I used. 
for the this is my voltmeter I use for the uh, for testing. It's this cheap Klein amp, clamp slash voltmeter. I really like it. You know, I think it's right under a hundred bucks. And the kit I got came with this guy, a little plug tester, so you can plug it in an outlet and see real quick if it's good, bad. It's got a GFI button to test GFI. So I highly recommend. I will. Uh, I'll put a link in the comments to to that kit that I bought if you guys like it. Um, and I think that's it. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.